Miracatesia. Thank you. Oh, thank you for even in the recovery, even in the recovery of things that have been archived, even in the recovery of things kept, even in the restoration of all things, even in the restoration of all things, restoring doctrines, even according to other nations, restoring even light that has been kept, even light that has been hidden, even in the restoring of all things, even in that restoration, even in that restoration of the apostolic all order even in the restoration of even things that are supposed to be set in their ordinances even in that restoration i would also restore even gifts miracles Amen. even diverse workings that are attached even to that restoration Amen. even things that we witness to that restoration even things that witness to that light even things that witness to that order for there are signs there are wonders there are miracles that are attached that will signify even they will signify the coming and the restoration of the order of light that has been kept that was given even to the apostle for i'm restoring the true apostolic order i'm bringing forth even the true apostolic order even the true apostolic order in his strength and his authority for i'm bringing not just even the knowledge and the lines but i'm also bringing the authority Amen. attached <coughs> even the authority Amen. that accompanies yeah. even yeah. the restoration and the speaking yes. forth of those things yes. kept forth i'm bringing forth even that authority again Amen. and even that authority is even here even that authority is even yes. here for you to speak again yes. for you to speak again yes. for you to speak again for there is even the demonstration even the demonstration of his power for there is a manifestation but there is also yet the demonstration for I will bring even the restoration of the demonstrations, even of that order, even of that order. For that authority, even we embody you to speak, even if we embody you to speak, Amen. even you will speak so that even that, even that, even that which has been ordained will be birched forth. Amen. It will be birched forth. Amen. It will be birched forth so that a people <coughs> according to divine order will be raised. Even a people according to divine order will be raised. So I said, speak for, for the authority is here. Even that authority is here even that authority is here you will see it even in its manifestations amen. and its signature you will see it even upon you see the lord can we say amen to that amen. we'll receive that word as the word of the lord amen let's see osia chapter six sorry <laughs> holy ghost service hallelujah amen um it's, it's just oh my god amen 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 you know, the Lord took an egg in the office of a prophet is higher than that of a teacher. You know, I've heard, I, didn't, I didn't know until I heard him, he heard him saying it. And when he was saying it, he bore witness to me. You know, I minister as a teacher. I also minister as a prophet. And I always, sometimes I prefer ministering as a teacher because I am very straight and predictable. But when, I, when the Lord wants me to wear the prophetic garment, it's... It's unpredictable even to me. I just want us to bear with the Lord. He's the Lord that is blessing us. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? It's a prophetic blessing. Prophets. It's a prophet's blessing. Uh, the Bible says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the reward of a prophet. I just felt I needed to say that with faith. That that demonstration of the spirit was a prophetic demonstration. It was a flow. It's the garment, the anointing. And the authority, uh, part of the, those are part of the freebies in the prophetic office. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Including the singing. It's not ordinary, is it? Just singing and dancing. Things are happening in the spirit. Uh, it's a moving of the spirit and moving of life. Can we say amen? amen. So let's see Osea chapter 6. We have been looking at the restoration of all things since the beginning of the year. Um, we are still on that body. Um, um, <clears throat> we are looking at God's patterns of restoration and we know that the culmination of restoration is the building of God's house. Can we say amen? amen. And um, the vision of restoration has landmarks. I've been saying that. There are landmarks in the restoration of all things spoken by the Mount of Prophets. And those landmarks were the things that we have been looking at. We have been looking at the, the being harmed. 
the army of the Lord are the armories of God, becoming the inheritance of the church. The armories of God. When you say you are harmed, it means that you are harmed with the armories of God. Then we are looking, we, we began to look also into becoming the bride of God. We said the bride, in terms of consecration, is the highest level of consecration of the church on earth is to become a bride. The highest level of consecration of the church on earth is become the bride. The highest level of protection of the church on earth is to be an army. To be protected from the forces of sin uh, and death. The gates of hell and death. So when Jesus said, I will build my church, he's talking about a church that will be harmed against the forces of, of hell and death. And the gates of hell will not prevail. There's a kind of church that has the hammeries to be harmed from the gates of hell. The gates of hell actually harm souls. Can we say amen? They are, they are, it's the armories of hell. They are the highest armories of hell to harm souls. What I mean souls, all souls, both souls of believing and the souls of unbelieving. Gates of hell has different kind of armories for souls. So, but Jesus has the wisdom to build such an house that is harmed. Uh, against the gates of hell. I'm coming back to Matthew. Uh, amen. So you can see the vision of the army, the bride, and the city, which is the building of God's house, is one vision. Can we say amen? amen. All this thing I said is in Revelations, between Revelations 19 and 22. Revelations 19, we see the army of God. We see the picture of the army of God. Uh, in Revelations 19 also, we see the bride that is about perfecting a uh, journey or consummation into the glory of eternal life. That bride in Revelation 19 already has incorruptible glory because she already has the righteousness of saints. Uh, amen. amen. She has made herself ready. Sir, to make herself ready is that she's already clothed with incorruptible life. What did I say she's already clothed with? She has incorruption. For her to be ready, you will not be ready except you have received of the incorruptible inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and unfading. So this bride already has uh, that vesture. Those garments are already there. It was only remaining just the garment of eternal glory. But this, this bride already has everlasting garments. Okay, everlasting garments. Everlasting garments are incorruptible garments. What did I say? What did I say, sir? So let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. So when it comes to the highest state of consecration eh, of the church is to be the Lamb's wife. Eh, it means if you are a Lamb's wife, you are also a Lamb. So when it comes to God, meekness is the highest authority of the, even the Godhead. Their meekness is the, is the secret of their power. Their meekness is the secret of their power. Because the highest symbol eh, of our Lord Jesus Christ in the world to come is a lamp. Can we say amen? amen. So it's a lamp that carries... Authority is a lamb. You see the marriage supper of the lamb. We see the wife of the lamb. Take me back there. The wife of the lamb. So the bride is a lamb's wife. The bride is a company of lambs. Uh, now, part of the characteristics of lambs are, is what Hebrews 7 verse 26 I like that. When you say you are a lamb, it means you are consecrated. Uh, it's the lambic life is the fully consecrated life to God. The lambic life was the fully consecrated life to God. So even Jesus Christ 
was in a lambic state before he condescended to become flesh. Do, do you believe me? That's why the Bible says the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So the natural state of the Godhead is in is lambic. Eternal life is a lambic life. It's the raw life of lambs. Eternal life, which is the raw life in the Godhead, is lambic. It's the raw life of God. The Godhead are a family of lambs. It is a church of lambs. And the symbol of lambic, lambicness, if there's, or lambness, I don't even know what to say, is meekness. The curriculum of, of being a lamb is a curriculum of meekness and lowliness. There's no other thing. That is what they have. Jesus said, learn of me, for I am meek. And lowly. He didn't say I'm anointed, but Jesus is anointed. What Jesus has is meekness. That's the curriculum of the DNA of their life. The curriculum of their life. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, the curriculum of their life is that of meekness and lowliness. Uh, and that is the original state of the Lamb before he condescended to become flesh. Uh, so Jesus also, so the raw life of the Godhead is lambic life. But the lambic life was originally conscripted in the Godhead. Meaning no man was a lamp. It's only spirits that were lambs. The Godhead were the original lambs. I'm using our lambic as a portrait of the nature and life in the Godhead. Now, the purpose of God bringing forth creation and visiting man is to integrate man into the highest state of Godhood. The purpose of God condescending into creation, much more the sending of our Lord Jesus Christ to become flesh, yes, was to die for our sins, but beyond that was to integrate man in the highest state of, the, of Godhood. So, you see that lambic state was only originally conscripted to, to God and God alone. But God wanted to share divine nature, much more, eternal nature with man. God sent the son in the likeness of sinful flesh to die so that man can access the life that is in glory. Can we say Amen. So Jesus Christ grew back into lambicness. He was originally a lamb. He was a lamb. He became flesh and grew back into the full lambic stature. Can we say amen? amen. So Jesus was not just an everlasting lamb, eh, which is Amnos. Jesus became eh, Anion. That's an eternal lamb. So the lamb that is sitting on the throne right now is a glorified lamb. What, what do I say Jesus is right now? Now, when he was on the earth, by the time he was published at Jordan, because he was a publishing by the Father, when he was published, he was a lamb. He was a lamb that he had begun, Kai, he had begun the, the, the formation of lambic life. He was not a full lamb. As at Jordan, eh, thank you for bringing me into John 1 29. Amen. Jesus could not have been offered yes, at this stage. Yes, he could not have been offered to bear the sins of the whole world. He will not have been, he will not have, Jesus was not qualified at this point as a full sin offering. Jesus had to learn obedience by the things he suffered. So Jesus became a full amnos lamb. So even in lamb, everlasting lamb. I, I, I hope I'm not confusing you. There are seasons of the purity of that lamb. When, when, when the Bible said, the next day John, seeing Jesus, said, behold the lamb. He was a lamb. He was an everlasting lamb. He was in the season of the purity of an everlasting lamb. But he was not fully the kind of lamb that should die and bear the sins of man. Jesus had to grow in lambhood. 
Jesus had to grow in lambhood until he would had to be received as a perfect sin offering. He had to grow in lambhood. That lambhood growth is tied to obedience. He had to obey the Father to, until he became the perfect lamb to be sacrificed. Can we say amen? amen. Eh? And so that lamb was the one that was slain on the cross to pave way eh, for the full access of man into the lambic uh, nature in the Godhead. So there is a lambic nature in the Godhead that is higher than creation. What did I say? You will not be qualified for the lamb nature in the Godhead if you have not been fully perfected in the sufferings of the lamb eh, in time. So you can see that Jesus Christ could be able to call for that glory. In John 17, he said, I have, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that you have given me. That work was a work of obedience that would qualify him to be a perfect lamb. So even before Jesus was crucified, Jesus was already calling for that word, for that glory. So I'm just showing you the consecration of our Lord Jesus Christ, paving the way for the church. So now, back to Revelation 19. So, the bride there. So, listen to this. The bride in Revelation 19 was a perfect Amnos lamb bride. So, the, this bride, yeah. It remains one more entrance that they must... They have to now go through a feast. They have to go into what I call the feast of the heavens, of, the, of, of eternal life. They had to go, in, go into a feast of eternal glory for them now to be a glorified lamb company. So what you see in Revelations 22, 21 and 22 is different from Revelations 19. So just like we have Amnos lamp and that is Amnos. Amen. I'm sure this is not new to us. Amnos lamp. Eh? And then we have lamp that is Anion. Anion. Then we also have Amnos bride. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Then we have Anion bride. Anion bride is a bride that is already glorified, seated with the lamp in glory. So in Revelation 19, we had a bride that already had fine linen. Are we here? Okay, I don't even know how this meeting will end. Amen. I've just begun. Praise God. Can we say amen? amen? So let us be glad and what? And rejoice and give glory to him for the what? Marriage of the Lamb is come. I like the word he's come. He's come and the wife has what? So I like the word the wife has made herself ready. So this is a ready bride. She's ready. Uh, now, and to her was what? Granted that she should be what? Arrayed. I, can we say the word arrayed? arrayed. Oh, you are not saying that word with me. Arrayed. That word arrayed, it means it is, it is a, it's a building. It's an arrangement of a life. Uh, and to her was uh, gr that, granted that she should be arrayed in what? Fine linen. Huh? Clean and white. Can we say amen? amen? Everybody say clean and white. Amen. So it's two things. It's clean and it's white. You know, you can have a white that is not clean. So it's talking about the perfection of incorruptible life. So when you begin incorruptible life, amen, amen. You, begin, eh, you begin a journey to whiteness. Eh? But they have to, they have to, they have to clean you eh, constantly until you arrive at being white. Can we say amen? amen. It's perfection of incorruptible life. It's clean and white. Eh? You know, 
There are two things that makes a bride. What did I say? For you to be a bride, you must be without spots. And then you must be without what? Wrinkle. Take me to, I'm coming back here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You know, at times you have to wait for the message. I open, this is the second week, I'm opening Osea chapter 6. And heaven is not granting me a eh, right way to go through that door. Amen. So let's just flow with heaven. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Uh, are you with me? Yes, now take me to verse 26. Okay, let's start from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. And what? Gave himself for it. So they are telling you men that you have to give yourself to your women. Can we say amen? amen. I know what, the men are not saying amen. amen. You don't understand. You are so important that they have to use you to preach Christ. That's how important a man is. A man is so important that they need you to minister the function of Christ to the church. Eh? So you are so important. You are supposed to mirror the vision of Christ. What did I say men should do? Husband. Eh? Jesus Christ is the honor word for husband there is the bridegroom. So you can remove that husband and put bridegroom, love your wives. Eh? No, it's not even right yet. Listen to me. Are you with me? Let me make it harder for us. It means the man must be a bridegroom first before he, he can groom a bride. In formation, you should be ahead. Oh, nobody's saying amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not by Rugbo Abel. Eh? You need husbands, love your wives. If you need to be a bridegroom to be able to groom a bride. Eh? What did I say you need to be? So it means they have also groomed you. Jesus has been able to groom you as a man. Then you can groom a woman. So husband, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church. Uh, and gave himself for it. Gave himself for it. How did he give himself? Uh, how did he give himself? It's when you say a colon, it's a continuation. How do you give yourself to your woman? Uh, that he might want? Oh, you are not answering me. That he might want? Pastor CG, there are two different things. Sanctification is holy place. Cleansing is most holy. Yes. Hallelujah. What did I say sanctification is? Uh, then cleansing is what? Cleansing is the beginning of most holy work. So there is, they sanctify you to cleanse you. Meaning they set you apart. They now begin special work of cleansing. Uh, special work of cleansing. Can we say Amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Now, when they sanctify you, you become a virgin. Yes, sir. You, become a, you become a full virgin. A virgin that can now be um, further cleansed eh, and adorned. Just like in the Feast of Esther. The Feast of Esther was divided into two seasons. They were first purified, then they were adorned. So, can we say amen? amen? Now, you cannot even qualify for the Feast of Esther if you are not a virgin. If you are not a virgin, you can't qualify for that feast. The people they look for are virgins. Yes, so, meaning that you must have been separated from the world to qualify to be a virgin. You can see why the doctrine of Christ is important. And that's why we must keep preaching Christ. Amen. Our message should be Christ and Him crucified. Uh, if you preach Christ without the cross, it's crisis. You, you often say to me, say Christ, become Christ. No, you cannot become Christ-like without the power of the cross. Crucifixion is the strength of Christ's life. Crucifixion is the strength and power of Christ's life. So, you need to be sanctified. 
separated as a virgin, for you to be further cleansed and adorned. So you have two seasons of work in the... Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have two seasons of work in the most holy. There's further cleansing and there's now adorning. There is cleansing and glorification inside the most holy. There's a further sanctification. Uh, we have taught you that before. Amen. So Christ sanctifies, the Father also sanctifies. Write that down. Christ is a sanctifier. The Father is a greater sanctifier. So you always have sanctification and cleansing at every stage of your growth. Okay? In Jude chapter 1, the Bible speaks of the Father, sanctification of the Father and preservation in Jesus. So what they are saying that if you are not sanctified, you cannot be preserved. What does it mean to be preserved? To be made incorruptible. Yes, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and what? Brother of James, to them that are what? Sanctified by God the Father. Not, not so, amen. You need to know this. You say, ah, these people, they'll say Christ. They'll say God. Oh, they're just messing up things. Christ, Father, and God. It's just Christ, John. It's just Christ, John. You know, when I was coming today, God was telling me in the morning, he says that, Epignosis is exact and complete knowledge. If you want to learn to know God well, we must classify knowledge. Amen. And the people don't argue about that in the natural. When you were in school, were you doing just any course? Why did they put 101, 201, 401? Well, that, why did they not say, okay, you are going to study banking, and that is banking. Banking is banking. Uh, so knowledge must be communicated systematically. What did I say? In fact, in God also, knowledge is classified. If not, Pastor Friday, you will not be baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Father. They are showing you classification of knowledge. He said, name is name. Name is not name. Just tell me, name is name. Sir, do you want to be a spiritual illiterate? Uh, so knowledge must be classified so that your learning of God is progressive. What did I say? So that your learning of God will progress. So Christ is a sanctifier. Now the sanctification of Christ is in the holy place. Now the tabernacle is the divine pattern eh, for being glorified. What did I say the tabernacle is? Like I taught you many years ago. I went to, I went to for a program many years ago. In, into the to Pastor Tony Bakaris Church, Lateran, 2003. I won't forget. I went home. Uh, so that year, Makambi came to minister. I won't forget fri Final Frontier. I, had that, I have those messages for a while until the case. The case says, but it was a powerful. Makambi is a powerful minister. Then, uh, Bankan Kimola, you know, I've never seen anybody teach a tabernacle that way. It was a five day conference I attended every day. He taught the tabernacle, the grandfather clause of every biblical revelation. I will never forget. It stuck in my heart. He taught the tabernacle from the outer court to the mustoli. And I saw everything was Jesus. Everything was Jesus, including the colors. Everything was Jesus. But Jesus at different stages. So that stuck in my heart. And I believe that God put that thing in my spirit. Today when I read the Bible, I read the Bible that way. I see three dimensional operations of God. Name of the Holy Ghost, name of the Son, name of the Father. Mystery of Christ, mystery of the Father, mystery of God. Outer court, holy place, most holy. Eh? Can we say amen? amen. Everybody say three dimensional. Eh? Faith, hope, and charity. Eh? Levi, priest, high priest. Eh? Three dimensional. I began to see the Bible. I, I, you can't, I see the Bible in three dimensional. It makes me understand scripture well. I can relate with it. Eh? Is it that it's in twos or in threes? Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. That's how I see it. At times you can even break two into three. If you are detailed, two, you can in two, you can see, you can still break into three, two and three, two and three. Eh? So I, I found out that it is, it is true, actually. When you study scripture deeply, you will see those patterns. They are consistent. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
So, um, so sanctification and then cleansing. They are showing you that what the bridegroom does to the bride is to sanctify the bride, then cleanse the bride. Uh, it will sanctify the bride, cleanse the bride. You will see that in First Peter chapter one. Elect according to the foreknowledge of Father. Uh, according to the what? Sanctification of the Spirit. Unto obedience and speaking of the blood. So you can see that that's also cleansing. Yes, sir. Uh, unto obedience and what? The sprinkling of the blood. It's a further cleansing uh, that will now take away spots and wrinkles from the bride. Can, can we say amen? amen? Can we say amen? amen. So, because, so, so for you to be incorruptible, like I said, two things must happen to you. You must be spotless and you must be without what? Blemish. You must be spotless and be without what? Blemish. Uh -huh. so when you say you are, to be without blemish is that you don't have wrinkle. Uh, wrinkle. So, one deals with sin. The other deals with death. Believe me. Uh, so, to be without spot uh, is to be without sin. Some say, ah, I don't believe it. Better believe it. To be without sport is to be without sin. First John chapter two verse two. First John chapter two verse one. My little children, these things write on you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are things that you that are written. Those things are things eh, of the beginning. It is the word of life from the beginning. Eh? That can bring you into a state where you sin not. Can we say amen? amen? It means you are spotless. Sir, to be spotless means that you are incorruptible. So spotlessness is the beginning of incorruption. Write that down. Spotlessness is the beginning of incorruption. These are the blessings of the gospel. So this is how it is. Undefiled, incorruptible, undefiled, unfading. Incorruptible, eh? 30 fold. Undefiled, 60 fold. Unfading, 100 fold. Oftentimes, undefiled and unfading go together. So the first work is to make you incorruptible. The last work is twofold. It's to make you both what? Undefiled and unfading. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can hear you say amen. amen. Take me back to Ephesians 5. So, to be without spot. It's to be without sin. It's to be made incorruptible. It's to begin the journey of being an incorruptible soul. A soul that cannot corrupt. Uh, it's to make your ways. Uh, make your ways. Uncorruptible before God. You know, in, in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says, And the ways of man became corruptible on the face of the earth. So there's a way spirits as, and that is the issue in the church. There are things that the Lord begins that Satan corrupts. Yes, the reason is because we are not entered into a life uncorruptible by evil spirits. Yes, so incorruptible life is a reality in God. And it is a reality of the bride. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. So now, so like I said, they will make us incorruptible and then make us what? Eh? Incorruptible or without spot. Then they will now make you without blemish. Take me to, I want to explain that a little bit further. Lord, thank you. So, thank you. Go back to verse 26. Then we'll, we'll go back to verse 26. I hope you are not tired. No, we have just started, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm mindful of time, okay? By 1.30, we should be through. Amen. Uh, hopefully. Amen. Amen. I know we have cases today, so I'm trying to finish um, early so that we can go home and rest for our evening meeting. Okay? So that it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So you can see. Word. So you can, that's, if you know, if, pastor, if clean, sanctification and cleansing differ, it means word also differs. Yeah. So that's the two. So we have different tools. In fact, what classifies the sanctification and cleansing is the word. Yes, sir. The reason why 
sanctification and cleansing eh, are dif they differ at different stages. So what I even see is that at each level there's sanctification and cleansing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even in the holy place yes, sir. there's cleansing. Yes, sir. Eh? Even in uh, the Holy Ghost yes, there is a measure of sanctification and what? Cleansing. Yes, Those are the processes that need to go on to bring you into the inheritance of that name. You know, we have been teaching on the full names of God. So, you will not come into the blessing of a word in God until you are both what? Sanctified and cleansed. And it is the word that determines it. Can we say amen? amen. So, it is the word of the Father or the word of God that produces the bride. The word of Christ produces a virgin. Can we say amen? amen? The word of Christ produces a virgin. The word of God, which is the word of the Father, produces a full, a bride, eh? an incorruptible bride. Then the word of God, the word of God produces a glorified bride. So you can see that in Revelation 19, even the incorruptible bride that is already incorruptible has been sealed with the name of the Father. She still needed another word. She needed the marriage supper of the Lamb so that she will now be fully clothed in the glory of the eternal God. Seasons of journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I am excited about this. Amen. amen. Can we say Amen. So, that he might what? Present it to himself, a glorious church. So, you can see, eh? you cannot become glorious without glory. You can't become glorious except you are first spotless and or and wrinkleness. Or you are, you, you are without wrinkle. So, to be spotless is sinlessness. To have, to be, to, have, to not have wrinkle is deathlessness. When you say deathlessness, I'm not talking about the body not dying physically. I'm talking about the fact that, eh, first of all, when you say you are deathless, eh, it means that you can't change anymore. So the beginning of deathlessness is sinlessness. The beginning of deathlessness. These things are in the Bible. Can we say amen? amen. Deathlessness there. Eh, can we say amen? amen? Is immortality. Deathlessness is immortality. So sinlessness begins the journey to immortality. A lot of people talk immortality. They can't deal with, they can't talk about salvation of the soul. If they give you immortality without sinlessness, eh, eh, you become a beast. It's not, it's not, the, the secret of immortality is tied to sinlessness. Jesus will not give immortality to a sinless soul. Let me say that again. Jesus will not give immortality to a sinless soul. That's what the, that's what the serpent was planning in Genesis chapter 3. You know, because the tree of life is a, what, is a tree of immortality. That immortality has two folds. The immortality begins from everlasting life. Amen. Uh, Pastor, are you following me? What did I say immortality begins from? Actually, there are two kinds of immortality in scripture. The Greeks separated it. There's one that is called Athanasia. There's another one that is called Atasia. It's two. One is sinlessness. One is incorruptible. One is, one is deathlessness. One is everlasting. Then the other is what? Eternal. You need to study deep to see the difference. If you see the one in Romans 2, eh? Please look for that one. Amen. Let's do a little bit of Are you ready for Bible study? Yeah. Amen. So look at the one in Romans 2. Huh? This one is everlasting. This one is deathlessness. Huh? Amen. You can look for the Greek for this. Amen. Just, it, I did the study one time. It's been a long time. I don't have my notes here. I'm just teaching for my spirit. You know, after a while, you will, you will journey, journey, journey. You, you, you don't need notes to minister again. Uh, and you're able to teach the word. Uh, so to them who by patience, continuance, in what? Well doing. Look at that. Seek for what? Everybody say glory. Everybody say glory. 
Say incorruptible. Say honor. Say undefiled. Say immortality. Unfading. So this immortality there is the seal of everlasting life. Then, comma, eternal life. So there is, give me the, the Greek for this immortality here. Aftasia. There's one that is called aftasia. You can see incorruptibility. Uh, genuineness, incorruption. It's the seal of incorruption. So, when you see incorruptible, undefiled, unfading, eh, it is a journey of incorruptibleness. When you begin, you see, divine life is also systematic. Are you with me? What did I say? You don't come into divine nature at once. They minister it in stages. So that's why you see incorruptible, undefined. You see, apostles don't repeat. When you grow up and understand apostolic revelation, the, the apostolic systems of revelation, you will understand how they rightly divide the word. So they are, they are showing you stages in incorruptible life. Eh? Now, you know, like I've taught you before last year, when we're looking at the epistles of John, we have little children, young men, fathers. All of them were in corruptible states. Even the little children. They were children born into the world of incorruption. What did I say they were? But they were still at the first stages of incorruptible life. So they were children of incorruptible life. I even showed you that there's a difference between babes and children. That you have babes. The little children are two in First John chapter 2. There's a little children that are babies. There's a little children that are growing infants. So, there are stages of incorruptible life. So, but when you journey and uh, you do all the obedience of incorruptible life, you will come into the seal of that life. Yeah. That is what they are called here as what? After, after uh, Is it after seer? Uh, Atanis? No, 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 no. The one in Romans 2. Is Aftasia. The ones in Romans 2 is Aftasia. You will come into Aftasia. Meaning you have come into the seal of incorruptible life. God forbid, you may start with a measure of incorruptible life and not finish it. Meaning you were not fully sealed. You are not sealed. You can begin the school. How many of you know that you can begin a school and drop out? A dropout of early learning. Eh? cannot be crowned eh, or rewarded eh, with the blessings of that realm. So if you went to medical school and you dropped out in 600 level, you are not a doctor. But you know, you know things too. We have many medical uh, students that dropped out. They have hospital. Eh? Or Sister Yonju, we have lawyers that did not go to law school. And they have, they, have, they have law firms. That one is not a lawyer. It's lawyer. You know, lawyer is away from lawyer. Eh? May, may you not fall into the hands of what? Lawyer. <laughs> Those ones didn't go to law school, sir. But they can say they are barista. So, uh -huh. if you don't finish incorruptible school, you cannot have the seal of the Father. The seal of the Father is a stamp that you went through all the seasons of incorruption and you now have what? Immortality, which I call deathlessness. You begin, so in that school of the Father, their, their work is one thing, is to deal with sin. The, the, the work of the Father, Pastor Friday, is to expire sin. Every form of sin, every fabric of sin. Because you will not be qualified to be a bride that is spotless and without blemish until sin is decimated. I can't hear your amen. amen. This is the vision of God. Until they decimate every fiber and cell, every atom of sin, until you are blameless before the throne. Revelations 14. Blameless before the throne. Virgins before the throne. 
When I say you are a virgin before the throne, amen. That throne virgins, they are not ordinary. They are incorruptible ones. So. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? In their mouth was no guide, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Not before men. So, amen. Listen to this. To be faultless without before the throne of God means you are incorruptible. You are already sealed. Now, you are not just incorruptible. You have finished the school of incorruption and you have been sealed. Now, you may be, you may be fault, you may, they may have fault before, before, in you before God's throne and before men you are faultless. Now, let me tell you, a virgin is faultless before men. If, you, if we have a virgin church, meaning a Christ church, man can't fault them. It's difficult because you can't see their flaws. But the throne still sees their flaws. When you are a virgin, meaning you are, a, you are spiritual, eh? you, are, you, you are already fallen in peace with all men. So man can't fault you because you are in charity. When you see a charity soul, it's difficult. Man can't flood that soul. Except they want to lie against it. Because when it comes to the justice concerning relationship with man, you can't be fought. You can't have fault. Before men. But before God, they could still see such a soul eh, as having fault. What is their fault, Pastor CG? Their DNA has not been fully tampered with. They still have inside them. They still have sin and wrinkles. Meaning they can still corrupt. So that's why Jesus had to finish obedience. Because the son that was declared at Jordan could still be, eh, could still have changed his mind concerning the plan of God. Though you were a son, yes, he learned obedience. What's the purpose of that learning obedience? To so perfect what? His sonship. To seal. To seal his sonship. To seal his sonship, Jesus had to go through all schools of the incorruptible life in God. It's the same thing for the bride. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I like the word without fault. So without fault is that you are what? Take me back to that. Don't move me away from my thoughts. Uh, you have to follow me. So you have to... You have to finish the curriculum of incorruption in being sealed with the name of the Father. So, Romans chapter 2, we have Af uh, Aftasia. So, that is immortality. That is the seal of incorrupt uh, incorruptible life. It's called deathlessness. Meaning, you, you, I like the word deathlessness. Deathlessness. So, then without, we'll seek for glory, honor, immortality, eternal life. So, that immortality is closer to eternal life. Eh? So, that is the fullness of everlasting life. Can we say amen? amen. Immortality, comma, eh? eternal life. Can we say amen? amen? I can't hear you say amen. amen. So, there is a immortality that is in corruption. There is an immortality that is eternal life. That one is a reward. Yes, sir. That one is a reward for those that have deathlessness. So, if you don't have deathlessness, eh, which is the seal of the Father, they cannot crown you with the glory of the Lamb. The, you see that glory of the Lamb? They only give souls that have become sealed with incorruptible life. Eh, which I call deathlessness or immortality. Thank you. You have shown me Athanasia, so you can see. Take me to the. Take me to. Thank you for doing this. You're not, uh -huh, you are doing well now. So one is Aftasia. Another one. That's why it's, it's always good to see these things. Amen. And so I say, okay, in the New Testament, they didn't separate everlasting from eternal. The Greeks are trying. It's not all the time. But Hebrews separated it. The Hebrews separated everlasting from eternal. The Greeks saw that it was so close. And the Greek, Grecian mind, eh, eh, when, it comes to, when it comes to revelation, eh, the Greeks are not as blessed as the Jews. 
Revelation of God's ways. But you see, do you know the way English is today was is the way Greeks Greek is then in the time the Bible was written, in the time the gospel was preached. Okay? But at times language can be limited in describing things in God. Can we say amen? amen. So I'm just showing you divisions of life. Okay? So you now see Athanasia. Athanasia. Take me to First Timothy chapter six, verse sixteen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Oh, glory to God. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Start from, go up a little bit. I'm showing you about the journey of the bride. I give thee charge in the sight of God. I like the word, the sight of God. It's not an ordinary. The sight of God is the glory of God. Uh, after two days, he shall what? Revive us. On the third day, he shall what? Raise us up. Uh, that's the building of the temple. You know, Jesus said, uh, Pastor, Jesus said, uh, destroy this house and in three days, destroy this temple and in three days I shall build it. Jesus was talking about the building of the house. He was talking about his physical body. He will resurrect in three days. He was also talking about the building of the church body. Uh, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Yes, He's talking about each day. Uh, the day, one, each season of building is a thousand years. It's a day. So Jesus is saying it will take nothing less than 3,000 years to build the church. And that's why I believe that the gospel of this age is the gospel of the kingdom. They, they, if you say you are current with what God is doing, you have to be teaching how the temple will be finished. Like that's the program of God for now. There's almost nothing that Jesus has not restored in the church. The most important thing right now is that they want to finish this house. Can we say amen? amen. Oh, uh, I said they want to finish this house. Amen. I call it a third day project. And so after two days, he will what? Revive us. Or in two days, he will revive us. Uh, and then on the third day, he will what? Build us up. I've entered us here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, at times you, you want to start your way. So, I've, yeah, so in after two days or in two days. So in the first season of building, it is, is, it is one, it is two days, but it's actually a season. So he's talking about the altar court and the holy place. Uh, it's a season of building. In two days, it will revive us. That word revive in the Greek word, in the Hebrew, it's called chaya. It means to give life. So in two days, they will give two things. They will give life and peace. It is the covenant of the spiritual man that they will give us in two days. When I say two days, he's talking about the, the season from the outer court, the beginning of the outer court. Are you following me? Yes, sir. To the veil that partitions the holy place and the most holy. It is a two-day walk, Pastor Friday. It is to revive what is a revival? Eh? I like the word. Give life. This, give, this kind of revival is not the one we know in the church. This is a revival through doctrine. <laughs> what did I call it, sir? Oh, you are not saying it with me? So that he said you can't revive a soul without, without, without building. Actually, this revival is a measure of building, chaya, to give life. The way you build, revive a soul is to you should raise that soul. So they are showing you. It's just that they separate the activity of the two days from the third day. The reason is because the third day is a perfection of what? The work. Jesus said that. I think, I, Pastor, where is that scripture? No, look, where, when it says, thank you, God bless you, Pastor. You are with me. He said unto them, go ye and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils. And I do cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day I shall be what? So the third day being perfected is a day you will raise us up. But they have begun to cast out devils and cures. Huh? If I, oh, if I is even three. Casting out devils is before the sanctuary. <laughs> Look at it very well. I just saw that now. Behold, I cast out devils, comma. And I do cures today and tomorrow. Two days. So they show cast out devil. So uh, milk of the world is not in the tabernacle. It's not in the tabernacle. 
So you can see that much of Christianity today, we have not entered tabernacle. We have not even entered outer courts. It is more of the camp. We are doing ministry of the camp. Casting out devils there is Mark, Mark chapter 16 from verse 15 to 20. In my name, they shall what? Oh, you are not following me. In my name, they shall what? That's the name of the Holy Ghost. So the name of the Holy Ghost is before the, before the kingdom, before the courts. Huh? In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, these things are beautiful. We start here and we always need them. I'm only saying that we, are, we have not entered into eh, two activity of two days. Meaning we have not entered into kingdom until we start giving revelation of life and, and peace. Uh, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall heal the sick. Beautiful. But Jesus told us that it is the season before the first day. Behold, I cast out devils. Come on. I do cures today and tomorrow. Two days. So that is, that, I like the word I do, chaos. Can we say amen? amen. It is revival. Yes, building the soul by life. Chaya, to give you life. How do they give you life? By revelation, by understanding. By the understanding of who Christ is. The revelation of Christ is how they cure the soul. Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn us and he will what? Heal us. That's Christ. They will have to heal the soul. They will begin healing by giving of life. What did I say they will begin? Oh, some of you are tired. Can we say amen? Huh? It's the Lord that is teaching us. Do you know that? Huh? They will give you healing by giving you life. Huh? After two days, then he will revive us. That's what they do. They heal the soul. Huh? They are healing the soul with life. Then, in the third day, he shall what? Raise us up. So, to raise us up is to be perfected in his sight. What Jesus said, today I do chaos. Today and tomorrow I do chaos. On the third day, I shall be perfected. So, Jesus is saying that the ministry of perfection is a third day ministry. Or a third dimensional ministry. The church must enter into this ministry. So, when we are teaching perfection, glory, don't say that those people, they don't know much. This is what heaven is doing. Eh? He must love this ministry. Yeah. Right. Can we say amen? amen? And the third day, I shall be perfected. So, in the third day, he shall what? Right, look at that. Take me back to Osea. And after two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will what? Raise us up. That word, raise us up, is from the Hebrew word called kum. Q-U-M. Kum. It means to build. It means to establish. It means to fortify. Kum. Kum. He will kum us in the third day. And we shall want live in his sight. The, you know why I came to Osea was because of Timothy. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, ministry of his sight is ministry of glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did I say? Another word for ministry of glory is ministry of or is presence. So, Pastor Onesimus, it is eh, this message of incorruption that moves us into the presence of God. Amen. Presence of God is not an emotional thing. Yes, Let me tell you, the, listen, listen, listen. Amen. The church does not know this yet in terms of experience. Yes, Much of what we have been experiencing is the presence of God in the Holy Ghost. That is why we can carry some things inside that order of presence. Yes, sir. In fact, there are certain things the Holy Ghost does not take. Yes, sir. That they have not started introducing church to. Holy Ghost can kill. Holy Ghost did barrier for a couple. Oh, you, you didn't get what I said. Amen. What did I say Holy Ghost did? <laughs> you are, Holy Ghost. Like, Holy Ghost is better for a couple. Holy Ghost. So you know that the the churches we have now are not even fully Holy Ghost churches. 
Imagine lying to your pastor. Number one, it means that the pastor itself is without lying. Yes, sir. Pastor Okura Ole Shevun Kameh, sir. So even the pastors themselves, you know, those apostles, they were Holy Ghost men. They were, they were Jesus' men. So they carried a measure inside them. That's why they could make some kind of judgment. Uh, so imagine, you lie and that day you die. No, lie, die. If you lie, you die. So in that kind of church, what do you have? You have sense. You have sense because if you lie, you die. So you have sense, sir. I'm telling you, no wonder no one dare join them. <laughs> you, want to, you want to go and join lie and die church? <laughs> you say, eh, no one over here. No one over You could it, sir. So if you want to join that kind of church, eh, you will repent. And you say, okay, I want to follow the Lord. You will count the cost. Can we say amen? Now, so that's why I said that much of, we don't have glory of God church yet. This church, we are far from it. We are preaching it. The preaching is supposed to prepare us for it. You don't know what it means. So much of the glory presence we have, I said in his sight, his presence, is still Holy Ghost and it's not even full Holy Ghost. By the time the church is ready to enter into the Most Holy, it is virgins that they bring into the Most Holy. It is a virgin church. Who is a virgin church? A church that has been separated from this world. That, that is a church that can truly come into the presence of God. And I'm telling you, even that church, they still have what? Eating sins. A virgin church still has sins of the heart. Things, the Bible calls, eating things of dishonesty. That, sir, in your reborn glory. Jesus is not coming to repent any church from there. So you say, when. My wife ministered today. I was just shaking my head on it. I said, we have a long way to go. Uh, I don't think Jesus can come back in, in the next 50 years. 50 to 100 years. That's my opinion. And I think, I'm, honestly, I've, I've, I've done some little bit of study and research by mercy. It will take a miracle. For us to have a church that is, has made itself ready. You know, people are still struggling with this kind of word. It means the church has a long way to go. Quality of church is not in gatherings of crowd. Thank God for crowd. It's, it's, it's in how, you are can, how men are reaching heaven. Yes, sir. How you are building men up. So you can see, in the third day, he shall what? Raise us up. Raise us up. Come. Raise. It's a raising. Now, raising begins in the two days. But in the third day, they finish the work of raising. Actually, more raising is in the third day. Because the first two days makes you the heirs of God. What did I say the first two days makes you? Christ is the new earth. Now the earth, the new earth is higher than the present heaven. To be a new earth is higher than the present. It's not an honor to attain the status of a new earth. Eh? When you say a new earth, you are a full earth. It means you are an Adam. You are an Adam of the world to come. Uh, you are an earthy soul. Earthy. The first man was a living soul. The last man was a quickening spirit. The second Adam. It's not easy to be an earth of God. It means you are, when you finish earth, you become living. You, become, you begin everlasting journey. So you are not an ordinary soul. So, but there is more work to make you heavenly. The work of making you heavenly is a greater work. Jesus had to go to heaven to, to secure that for the church. Jesus had to sit on the right hand, purge our sins and sit on the right hand to secure that the church too can be an heavenly church. So it's not easy to get a church that lives in heaven, that dwells in heaven. Uh, a church, when I mean heaven, I'm not talking about this present heaven. I hope you know that. I'm talking about the heavens of the world to come. He's talking about being a heavenly man of the world to come. Being a glorious man of the world to come. 
to make a glorious church is to make an heavenly church. Huh? And those are things that Jesus wants to build in the church. So what they will do in that third day, that's what they will do. In the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live where? In his sight. So to live in his sight is that you are it means that you are abiding in glory. Amen. Eh? You will not just live, you will abide. Amen. What did I say? Just you know, the incorruptible seed is the word that liveth on and abideth forever. That is the nature of incorruptible life. So you can begin to live in incorruptible life. It is one thing. You begin to live the life does not mean you have abode in that life. So to abide in incorruption is to be sealed with the name of the Father. Amen. It is to be deathless. Yes, that is aftasia. Abiding is aftasia. Meaning now, you are, have done incorruptible life. You have lived incorruptible life and you are abiding in it. It means what it did here. That is Revelation chapter 14. The bride we see in Revelation chapter 14. Eh? Is a bride that has been sealed with the name of the Father because they have obeyed the laws of incorruptible life and they have abode. They have become heavenly. So you can be on earth and you are in heaven because of building. What did I say? I'm not talking about having an out of body experience and I'm not playing, about, uh, playing down on them. If I have out of body experience, to me, eh, it is not a big deal. If I have not become glorious, it's not a big deal to leave your body. You will come back and do obedience in the flesh. Those are the things that we have celebrated. We have celebrated that are there are against building. Eh? And all those things are not generic. You may never leave your body. But all of us need to do obedience in the flesh. As you want to leave body, as you want to leave, you must be built. And it's not good to live too much. Because they have to build you here. Amen. Huh? How many of you know that? If you, because you, you are living, he's not going to come back. <laughs> Sir, even in resurrection, you need this body. So when you leave it, ocean pada. Somebody told some of my pastors, say, I've not been in my body for three days. So I'm supposed to be jumping and eating the roof because you're not being in your body. I'm not being in my body for this. Like uh, people saw me in the office, but I was not in the office. Glory to God. My friends, sit down and hear doctrine. Stop jumping up and down. Amen. I'm not saying that it does not happen. It does. Uh, if you if join a hand out of body experiences, after join a hand, them. You know what he wrote. He said that the Bible is the highest level of prophecy. <laughs> That's what Rick Jones said. Eh? Bob Jones eh, made mistakes early in ministry, before 50. Bob Jones died in. on um, pure till he died was love. Was a man of terrible vision, sir. I, 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 don't, I don't see those kind of prophets are not around anymore. It's not all this. It's not prophet suddenly. You know this one. It's not all this kind of prophet suddenly. Eh? I see, I see, I see. I enter into your village. Lord, be, Go into my village and live there. <laughs> and uh, I'm in your street right now. I'm in your street. Huh? It's not like that. Though. Those, kind, those guys were terrible. The, the kind of seer. And that is even, those people were not even full prophets of the New Testament. Because a seer is not a full prophet of the New Testament. A full prophet of the New Testament has to be a preacher and a teacher of revelation of Jesus Christ. Hmm? To see vision is different from teaching him. You need prophetic sight to unveil Jesus. To scan him and reveal him. Uh, Paul Cain was in the wilderness, like I told you last week. For 40 years, he came out. He started ministries 
another kind of ministry eh, in his 50s. I'm just showing you different kind of. So I am seeing, I want to say this. I am seeing many ministries in the body hmm. right now. And I'm afraid. I'm saying this out of concern. Many are not planning to last. The Lord told me, he said, many eh, are heckles. Much more many are noises. He says, we have to learn to build enduring ministry. It is this way. Yes, sir. If not, you will not last. Yes, sir. You see, many of our fathers, the reason why they lasted many. is that they tossed a measure of incorruptible life in milk. Yeah. You see, milk, milk also has a measure of it. Yes. And they, because they held it well, that's why they are staying. There are some of them that did not handle it well. They did not stay. It's true, sir. They passed away. I've heard Bishop Oedipo talk about a very great evangelist in this Nigeria. He was saying it. He was saying it. He said, you see, it was pain. He said, how the man, you know, did not do ministry well and fizzled away. He said, you don't even know him. You don't even know him. So, even in that milk dispensation, there were some that passed away because they were not faithful. Amen. So ministry is not, it's not, it's not showmanship. It's not showing up. It's not, it's not social media. It's not all those things. It's quality of life. I say, may God give us that. Amen. It's having quality of life. It's stand before God. Hmm? Building. It's having building. So on the third day, he will build us up, meaning that the building will be completed. And like I said, the building on the third day is a more serious building because they want to make you heavenly. They want to make you an heavenly man. I said the two, first two days will make you an etty man. I didn't say etty, etty. Eh? It is the beginning of heavens. Yeah. It is, in a way, pastor, to be a etty is also a kind of heaven. Yes, it is the heaven of a spiritual man. Yes, it is also an heavenly man to be a spiritual man. You are a type of heaven. But you, have not, you, have not, you are not in the heaven that God abodes. You know, there is an heaven that God is not there. He's not seated there. He's not. So, they want to take you into the very heavens of God. So, that's, that's the activity of God for the top. There is a building. You see, so, pastor, in the most holy, you see, the most holy is one court. Eh? But if you combine the outer court and the most holy, it does not reach half of the most holy. The most holy looks shorter. Mm -hmm. it, it looks shorter. But it is a more longer journey. Uh, to make you everlasting. It takes a longer... So, if there's any way, maybe... Amen. <laughs> it takes a longer walk in terms of quality yes, to make you incorruptible. Yes, That's why you must quickly become spiritual. No struggle so much with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus so that you are, you are sanctified as a virgin. Because you now, by the time you are enrolled in the school of God, which is the school of glory, it is a now a longer journey. It's more difficult to glorify a soul. Because the journey, eh, the death, the, the, the dying is a deeper, is a deeper death. Sir. The commandments are higher ones. In most cases, let me tell you this. Many of us would just prefer to be spiritual and not divine. Yes. Because when you are spiritual, you are, you are a champion. I miss the body of Christ. You are a champion. Champion, champion. Ole, ole, ole. You don't know that song. Champion. You are a champion. When you are a spiritual man, you are already a champion. So a spiritual man sees the price to become divine. And he says, I know they do. So, why do you think Adam did not conclude his journey? Why do you think that Adam did not conclude his journey to the tree of life? And he wanted a shortcut. You think he, Adam did not sin eh, without knowledge. Adam saw the price. He saw the death. You see, what Adam disobeyed, Jesus obeyed. If the cup was easy, Jesus would not say, Father, If, you, if the cup was an easy cup, 
You know, there are some cockpit. Oh, they, oh, they rush here, sir. My father, if this cup, eh, if this cup may pass away. Eh, and he went again the second time and, and prayed, oh, saying, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Uh, what he's saying is that, see, I just want to do your will, but this cup is not an easy cup. So the cup to come into the glory of the father, is not an easy cup. It's a cup where a living soul will see. And choose not to take it. When you say somebody is a living soul, that's an Adam. Uh, it's a son that is already in the most holy. Sir, it's a son already in incorruptible life. That's why I say incorruptible life is not complete until they seal you with immortality. Immortality is a proof that you finish class. So you cannot carry the seal of the Father. That is what you call deathlessness. That that soul cannot die anymore. Now, for a soul to die, you know. You know, you living your body is not dead. Do you know that? Yes. By now you should know he's sleeping. Yeah. Christians don't die, we sleep. Yes. The real death is to be disconnected from God. Yeah. It's the soul to die. Or it's the soul to perish. It's your soul to become corrupt. That's what I was teaching on Thursday. And we need to teach it because yeah. it is possible that many Christians are getting even worse in church. The quality of their soul. In When you are a non-believer, you will not do evil as a Christian. Huh? And Satan does not send you because you are a Christian. Neither does he send you because you are a pastor or you are anointed. In fact, Satan likes using anointed people. Yeah. Yeah. He likes it. Yes, uh, well, you, know, you know, as like I was saying on Thursday, say, uh, so we have a kind of sense that today, because you are in ministry, eh, and you are a man of God, that you have immunity for some kind of sin. It's a, it's a sense. So, the minister is doing rubbish. In the name that he's a man of God, sir, you don't know what you are playing with. God can use you and dump you. I'm telling you, that's the fearful thing. God can use you and dump. As a minister of the gospel, your life outside preaching is the most important. Yes, sir. It's the most important. You have to be careful. Talking to ministers, you have to be careful. Uh, you see, amen. That's why it's not too good to take praise. Oh, welcome the great man of God. Woo, apostle, apostle. Friday, you soup. <laughs> Sorry, sir, that I use you as an example. And everyone is wailing. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not saying that is bad, but is, what is the state? What is heaven saying? So, may it not be that many apostles will roast the lake. Because they didn't apostle their soul. Their soul was not any near anything. They were not built. It's a very sad thing. Uh -huh. So the ministry order is different. Uh, we are reminding ourselves, it's for you to be built first. Yes, Ministries that you will use yourself, you be built. Uh. So on the third day, they will raise us up. Can we say Amen. amen. Now, so, so why? So that we can live in his sight. So I can appear in his sight and not live there. Eh? I can appear in his sight, but I am not yet living in his sight. So uh, when you cross from the sanctuary into the most holy, you are appearing in his sight. Eh? You are already coming under the visions of God, the revelations of God. There is a season of the appearing of God. But it's one thing for me to appear. It's another thing for me to live and abide. That's what John was telling the churches. John wanted churches that will abide. Yes, These things I write to you. Uh, no, no, no. First John chapter 1. Is it First John chapter 1? From verse 4. These things I write to you that your joy may be full. So full joy is to abide in God's presence. Psalm 16. Uh, in your presence is thou show me the path of life in thy presence is what and at thy right hand at what so they want you to bring you to full presence to bring you to full presence is for you to abide it is aphasia it's deathlessness this soul cannot turn anymore 
That's the work they want to do. This soul cannot change anymore. So all of us are not there, including myself. I'm not where, you know, there are certain things that yes, you, will, you will get to, your soul can turn. Some temptations that you are not yet immune to. Yes, sir. Eh? But God has to prepare us for it. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Nobody will sit to that, on that throne. With, Satan will not agree. Uh, Listen. You don't know who Satan is. Satan is a terrible prosecutor. If you're a lawyer. I have lawyers in the house here. All of you, you look like Christian lawyers. You are so holy. <laughs> you look like Tosi. Tosi does not look like a lawyer that can prosecute anybody. <laughs> It's too holy to do that kind of job. Or to all of them, they are just, they are, they are, they are holy lawyers. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe Sister Yonju still looks close to it. Uh, I like when Sister Yonju talks, he's talking law. Uh, hallelujah. But you know, when you want to prosecute, is it people that prosecute? <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> They will cross examine you. So, set, see, Satan will ensure that before you sit on hey, that throne, hey, hey. sir, what is doing? Ah. All kind of temptation. Ah. Everyone. So, it means you can't just be on the fire like that. You, you can't, they will make sure, they will cross examine you. They will go through you. They will test you with fame. They will test you with money. You know, you don't know how somebody is humble if they don't have money. Clothes is not your problem. Uh, uh, clothes is your problem now. You only have two trousers. It's not an edict. It's, it's easier to manage lack yes. than to manage abundance. Yes. So, yeah, I shall go, bring it, bring it, ja, bring it, ja. <laughs> You are not the first person. See, look at me, look at me. Some of you, you read your Bible and be afraid. Just open, don't open your mouth anywhere. Are you better than Solomon? Hey. Are you better than Soboshe? Why? So sure, could better solo. Solomon. Solomon grew in revelation environment. His daddy was not an unhigh person. Solomon knew heavens as a boy. So, God, 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 see, listen to me. Listen to me. God loves you, but he does not trust you. You. You are not the first person that will come. We are not the first people that will say, move of God. See, listen, listen, listen. We are not the first person to preach this message. So, that we are preaching it, it does not move God. Neither does he move Satan. Yes, Immortality, kingdom. Satan has seen many. Yes, yes. Uh, I want to that. <laughs> Satan is a proud spirit. Yes. Who are you? Uh, your fathers that are better than you had come, I dealt with them. That's why a generation that overcomes Satan, Satan will have underestimated them. Yes, he has to. They have, to, they have to be so weak. So if it's not us, if our children, they'll be weaker than us. Yeah, that's, that's the only way. Because you don't understand. Uh, Satan will look at you. Where, where, where are you coming from? You, you know, when I look at you, when I look at us, we're not better than our fathers. We talk things more than them. But we know. Ever say, we know. We know. Do, do you know Bishop Oedeko? Even if some of his consecration, I just say, ah, Allah Shanusa. When he's talking, Bishop's consecration. Eh? When he's talking, Adeboe's consecration. Terrible men. Terrible men in love. Those men, they walk with. Sir, in redeem, they almost killed Baba. He's still there. Can't even believe it. Son, no. <laughs> he's still walking with people. They want to poison him. He's still, he's still living in there, serving them. So I will have run away. You will not see me again. <laughs> I'll be ministering from abroad. <laughs> you just see screen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Receive your blessing. I'll, I'll be ministering on the screen. You see me. You will not see me. Online, eh? online ministration. I, I'll not come and die. Amen. <laughs> Do you know that Baba Deboe does prayer work every morning with a dog? You think that he's not in the mystery? You think they don't want to kill that man? Many of our fathers, eh, they have sent assassins to them. 
Church had they buoyed. They have wanted to assassinate like three times. Assassination. Physical assassination. Hey, I'm not talking about spiritual assassination, sir. The, the last one I heard, okay, I sent you that message of Reverend George. Yes, he said the people that sent you to, to kill us, he said, is somebody that he knew. Yeah. Yeah. Kilo. Yes. So, I will leave you to USA. You just be seeing me every Sunday on the screen. Hallelujah. I'm just showing you what those men have fought. And they are still standing. So we are not better. We are the weakest. We are weaker than our fathers. And most likely our children will be weaker than us. So I'm telling you, the, the generation that will deal with the dragon. Oh, sit down, just look at them, they'll be laughing. <laughs> 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 sit down, ask his boys too. Wait, wait, wait. Tunde. Hey, to do a shamo. All of you are coming. To do a shamo. All of you are coming. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I am very convinced. Eh? It is the least that will bruise his head. Amen. The ones that I think that this was. Why you, when I look at our generation, oh, even me, I'm discouraged. Even me, I just say, ah, oh, God, can we ever meet this standard? Can we ever meet the standards of our fathers? Both in contemporary times and in scripture. You know, I, you know, I read a lot of church history. I have read some church history, I started crying. Ah, what is this, God? This one is, this is deep separation. Deep separation to God. Commitment of the highest order to God. Amen. Can we have that? Thank you, Jesus. Can we have that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, pray get this here, la baria. Sisi prone is even a. Oh, is 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 a hidden wisdom. Yeah. It's a hidden wisdom. Mm. It's a hidden wisdom. It's a hidden wisdom that even the princes, even the princes of this world, even the princes, even spiritual wickedness in high places, even the dragon does not know of this wisdom. It's even the wisdom I used to beat him in bringing my son. It's the wisdom I use even, even in using my son Jesus to overcome him. Hmm. He said if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord yeah. of glory. It's a hidden yeah. wisdom. Yes. It's a hidden wisdom. Thank my Lord. same wisdom I'm going to deploy. Amen. The same wisdom I'm going to use. Same wisdom I'm going to use. The same wisdom I'm going to use for even. Even my strength is made perfect in your weakness. It is even that generation that is weak. Even that generation that looks feeble. Even that generation hmm. that looks 
that, that, that looks weak. 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 I will channel salvation through. I will channel salvation through them. I will channel them from the least. And I will raise them from the pit. I will raise them from the dust. And I will raise them to sit with princes. Yeah. I will raise them to sit with princes. I will raise them to sit with princes. Oh, even. That is how I'm going to even crush his head. That's how I'm going to crush his head. That's how I'm going to crush his head. For even that generation. Even that generation. Generation in which he has even overcome to a degree, he even overcome to a degree. I will turn it, I will turn it, I will turn it, I will turn it, and from there I will bring salvation. Amen. From there I will bring salvation. For when the darkness is thickest, that Jesus. is when I bring light. Yes. That is when I bring yes. light. Yes. For light will shine out Amen. of darkness. So also strength will come from weakness. Even so, salvation will come. Even from that generation that immorality and iniquity has become heightened. For when it is heightened, then salvation is sweetest. Then salvation is even seen clearly. Then salvation is seen clearly. For even I will beat him in his own game. Yes. I will beat him in his own game. For I will allow him. I will allow him. And when he thinks he's winning, that is when I will turn it. That is when I will turn yes. it. So be encouraged. Even be encouraged. Even be encouraged. Even be encouraged to follow. Even to follow. Even to follow. For there is a critical number I am looking for. And once that number is complete... You will see the titans. You will see it turn. Hmm. And I will unleash my Sorry. rot upon the dragon. Say the Lord. Can we all say amen to that? Amen. So we have hope. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I looked at the fact that all these apostles too, when they began, you know Peter? Peter lied. Sir, Baba lied, sir. He was a small girl that confronted Baba. Baba took second, first and second a piece of bitter. Yeah? A small girl approached and said, You are part of them. Is it me? Ogugbasa. <laughs> well, lie to lie. Subinalia. <laughs> Peter. Peter said, No, no. What, what, what do you mean? I don't like what. Don't do that, that kind of thing. You know. <laughs> Peter did it, sir. Peter. So tell your neighbor, say, We have hope. I know some of you still lie. Yeah, some of us even still steal, self. Both physically and revelationally. <laughs> eh? You take from your brethren. You use Oman Logman for brethren. Eh? But will you allow God? You know what the Lord told me is that let's keep building. Yes, uh, yes the Lord told me last year, said, just keep building. Don't be distracted. Mm. At times, the enemy will want to distract you by you paying attention yes, to those things. The weaknesses of, of the brethren. Yes, the Lord says, you keep building. Mm. Keep building. Amen. Keep building. Keep building. So Satan will cross-examine any soul that will sit on the throne. Mm. Uh, uh, he will cross-examine them. Like they did to Job. Yeah. They will cross-examine. Mm. So you can see the activity of God for the third is not an easy one. It's to build a blameless man. What did I say they want to do? Blameless. So a blameless man is an heavenly man. Eh? He's a, when he says somebody is blameless, they have become heavenly. So we shall live in his sight. Eh? Then shall we know them that follow on to know the Lord. I like that. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. So I like this one. So it is in the third day that we shall really know. True separation will not come until we come into that season. So we, the, the church must build into the third dimension. Amen. We have to build into there. That is where demarcation will be clear. You see, as it is now, we don't really know on the head. It's not clear. This kind of church. But when we come into that season and we are built into this face, the Lord himself will show. That there will be a clear difference. We, then shall we know if we follow on. So, sir, if you are not, if we, if you don't live in his sight, we will not know. That's what you are saying. Then shall we know if you follow on to know the Lord. So, take me back to First Timothy chapter six. This message we can't stop it. I just have to end it somewhere. It's, it just opens. Heaven is the one opening it. Mm. So I give the charge in the sight of God. We quicken it all things. Look at that. Uh, and what before what? 
Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good profession. So everything that happened before Pontius, they call it a good prote- profession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heaven was marking Jesus. Yeah. And was without fault. You know, you don't know what it means to be without fault in everything. Yeah. Including what you say. You know, Satan is wicked. He will cause somebody to say something to you. Just to provoke you. You will, you know, or alone world is there. You will hear some things. You want to defend yourself. Eh? Somebody will say, hero. Somebody just manifest a lie. <laughs> and then you want to say, no, 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 no. Let me, let me make the records clean. By making the records clean, sir, you will say what you are not, you will not, you will say what you are supposed to, what you are not supposed to say. You will not feel defiled. Yeah, that's, that's it. Eh? <laughs> Even me have not overcome this. You just feel, ah, no, 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 I won't have said anything. Satan gives you trap daily. Yes, That's why when daily. you must be totally governed by the spirits. Yes, no, no, when not to open there are times that the enemy is asking a question. Mm. People are asking a question. Yeah. Don't answer back. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you answer, it's a trap. Yeah. It's true, sir. Like when the Pharisees brought the woman, the caught in the heart of adultery. You understand? I'm sure they were trailing that woman. <laughs> if, maybe they even planned it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know Pharisee spirits. They plant that woman to fall into adultery so that they will get Jesus. That's how far the enemy can go to assault his soul. And that's what they call those are Pharisees, can you imagine? And they are ministers of their day. Teachers of the law. Satan overtook them. So when Jesus, when they came to Jesus, look at Jesus. Jesus did not answer. Jesus saw everything. So it's not everything that you answer to. Yes, sir. God told me many times, I say, learn to ignore. Yes, sir. I tell my wife, I say, just ignore. Just keep quiet. No answer. It's not everything that you need an explanation to. Just do as if the thing did not happen. Yes, sir. Of course, you will look foolish. Yeah. And as you are doing that, Satan will tell you, oh, dear. 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 You know, Satan do all the demo. Yes, or there, yes, or there. Hmm? You must not know how to talk. Yes. Mm. Imagine Jesus who has talked at the peak of his pain. If you be the son of God, it was Satan. You know, they have tempted him and tempted him and tempted him. He did not budge. The, the, what she do to the cross? A man was here. And he fiercely. In the midst of his pain, as they were doing boo, 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 boo. They waited, but they didn't say anything. You know, they waited for the pain to enter Jesus. In the midst of his pain, you know, you know when, they, when they crucify, you know, you're in pain. After they now set Jesus up, one of them now went. <laughs> if you be the son of God, come down. Sir, so, if it says me, I'll just come down. Eh? I'll just come down. You know what I'm saying? I'll just remove my hand from the nail. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Sir, you have spoiled the movie. Otiba Krishna Clay movie, sir. Oba script, Jesus did not spoil script. No, no, no. You think it was about him? No. It was about the script. Everybody says it's about the script. What is the script? What is written concerning me? It was written that he will die. It was written now. When he told his disciples that agenda that he will have to die, Peter rebuked him. So you know there are some things that they look good by Satan. Oh, Nicole, look at Jesus. Muye, look at Jesus. Muye. Just say, shut up! Get behind me, Satan! Because it's the will of God for me to go to the cross and die a criminal death. It is the will of God for me. Don't stop me. At times, even prophecy can stop you. And it's supposed to be a test of your resolve to do the will of God. 
Paul was supposed to go to Jerusalem. Agabus came. Yes, eh? and he, Agabus is a terrible guy, sir. Everybody know. When you see Agabus in town, ah. or Odessa, Agabus came, went to take the search of Paul, bounded himself, and said, such is the one that asks this. That is how you'll be bounded. And all the brethren say, Paul, don't go. Paul, don't go. Paul, don't go. Paul said, so you know that apostolic conviction eh, is even higher than prophetic revelation. Eh? Apostolic vision. Apostolic pathway. Eh? He said, ah, well, I know. You're only confirming that what he will do, this is what they will do, but it does not, it does not change anything. It is my destiny. Eh? It is my destiny that I'm bounded that way. That I'm born do that way. I said, that is how they are going to raise us. Yes. I said, you will see circumstances eh, and you will walk through it. Yes. You will see traps of the enemy, accusations of the enemy, plans of Satan to assault you, to malign you, to misinterpret you, to make to, for people to speak evil, and you will walk right through. Yes. You walk right through it. Hallelujah. So that same Jerusalem, that's where we go. Yes. Satan will look at it. This, this Paul. This Paul. This Paul guy. There must be something about our resolve for God. Yes. Yeah. You see these things, they have to build it in us. Yes. They have to build this thing in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Can we say amen? amen? So in the third day, they will build us up. Okay, We shall live in his sight. Yes. So take me back. Thank you. Verse 14. Uh, verse 14 of of First Timothy chapter 6. We are just at early stage. We we'll just touch early stage of this message. Okay? Verse 14, please. It says, But now keep this commandment, what? Without spot, unrebukable, uh, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. What they are saying is that keep this commandment, this is an everlasting commandment, without spot, without sin, until uh, you enter into deadlessness. Until that appearing is to Jesus is going to appear to now seal a walk that has begun in the yes, soul sir. concerning yes, sir. Eh, eh, concerning the everlasting promise of God eh, concerning the inheritance of God. So thou keep this commandment without spot, comma, unrebukable, comma. What, what does it mean to be unrebu unrebukable? You have no fault. It's the same thing. It's without blame. To be unrebukable is with, to be blameless. Yeah. What did I say? So you will be able to say, I'll be spotless. I'll also be what? Blameless. Then I'll be made glorious. Yeah. That's the honor. Spotless, blameless, glorious. When you are glorious, it means you are sealed with the name of the Father. You are already have aptasia. Eh? And it is the aptasia bride that can now begin to call for the glory of the eternal God. Which in his times is she who is the blessed and holy potentate. That's Jesus Christ. Blessed and the only potentate. He's blessed. But he's not just blessed. He's only. When you use only, only is a word subscribed to the eternal God. So Jesus is these two things. He's blessed. Everlasting blessing. Then he is also the only what potentate, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, hmm? who only has. So this is not this immortality is different. Shall you see Bible? So this one is Athanasia. <laughs> then I use only to qualify it, huh? to show you that this is not just incorruption. This is not incorruption. This is. Eh, eternal life. This is the one that be, was in God yes, sir. Eh, before time began. Yes, sir. This is the raw life in the Godhead who had immortality, who only had, who only had Athanasia. Immortality dwelling world. This light is not an the reason why it is lies that no man can approach 
is that his light is eternal. You, man can approach everlasting light. How do I know? Simple. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was, come on, you are not with me. I want also, in him was, and the light was the, and the life was the, so if, if he's the light of man, it means man can approach it. So, but this one is different. So what they are saying is that for you to approach this light, you are not man anymore. It is life beyond creation. <laughs> you cease from becoming man as defined by the present. I don't know if that's very clear. Yeah. Who only had immortality dwelling in what? Light! Which no man can approach unto. So this one, man cannot see it. Eh? For man to see it, man must be completely dead and separated from creation. So that is what the bride, that bride has made herself ready. Oh, no one wait for that bride was about being taken away from creation, the present, into yes, the world beyond creation. Eh? That's what that bride was waiting for. Because you cannot approach this light, this immortality, like this only immortality. They have to summon you. And it is a feast that brings you there. What did I say brings you there? Sir, you have to chop some kind of food that will make you not be a man anymore. You will not be a man. You will change. When you eat this akara, eh? you know, you eat some kind of food and you start flying in the night. Eh? It's true now. Some people have had food and they made themselves inside the realm of the spirits. So there is a kind of food called only mortality food. They only give it to incorruptible churches. It is a bride that has become ready. That has become incorrupt to that. Can he eat that food? Eh? They are doing that to elevate you from the present or from creation into the world to come. Not just even to the world to come. Into the throne of God. Yes, so these are the ones that will share the throne with him. Yes, sir. It is God, the lamp and his bride. Yes, All of them are lamps. Yes, God is a lamp. The lamp is a lamp. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. The bridegroom is a lamp. And the bride alarms. So you can see, it is this only. It's a meal that they must teach. They will teach it. They will reveal it to us. Can we say amen? amen. So you say, I'm not interested. May I say you will be interested in this one. So I am interested in everything that God has for me. Yes, sir. This is the reason why I'm living, sir. Yes. See, nothing makes sense to me anymore except all this stuff. I'm telling you. When you reach a point in, in this part, you will see the, the vainness in evil, not just in sin. You see the vanity in creation, in the present. Sir, creation is a vanity to God. Oh. Creation, the present, is a vanity to God. Eh? The Bible calls it eh, the works of his hand. It's a vanity to God. Creation. He said, those things my hands have made. So it's not a big deal. You know, it is those things that our, if we are not, if we, we are not even interested in those things that God's hand made. We are interested in those things that fallen man made. Yeah. That's true. Uh, ask me, what are the things you are really seeking for? Uh, uh, you're, 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 we are not even seeking for the head in its original form before the fall. All these things that we see, even the head is falling. Car, house, is it, all those things is falling heads. Uh, who made all those? Is it normal? Yes. So the church eh, is even interested in those things that man made. God says that everything I made, eh, those things, they don't matter to me. This is the man I want to look on to. I'm looking for a man that I will build my own house in. So the project of God is the project of building a house of rest. Can we say amen? amen. The house of rest is a bride that has been glorified. It's a glorified bride that God will rest in. Because that same bride that is a bride to our Lord Jesus Christ is the home of God. He is the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, but it's the house of God. So, Jesus marries the bride. God dwells eh, in, that, in that association. The, 
the, the marriage. Amen. Amen. The marriage of the bride and the bridegroom becomes a dwelling place for God. So you can see how, you see, ever, ever say, my soul. my soul. Come on, say, do it like this. Say, my soul. my soul. You see that your soul is a very important thing to God. Like I was teaching, I think it was in our devotion yesterday, I said, see, eh? nothing can fill the soul. I don't know where I thought it. Nothing can fill the soul of man, even this whole world. So you know all of us, if Satan gives you the word, what's it bear? Your soul is much worse than this world. This word, see, cannot even satisfy your soul. If they give all the word to your soul, your soul will lick it up. I say, I'm Belgian. I say, you know what I mean? It means God designed the soul only to fill him. It's only him that can fill you. So there's nothing you will do on the head that you will ever be satisfied. You can, nothing can satisfy. Marriage can never satisfy you. I'm telling you. Your marriage can never satisfy you. If you put your satisfaction in marriage, you'll be disappointed, sir. Except that marriage is, is designed for God. That marriage is the only reason. That marriage is a contract between you and your wife that everything about this marriage has to do with God from beginning to end. That God must take the glory. Because if God takes the glory, it is that that now defines what I get, get from it. Because I may not really, really gain. If it's about God. Say, so if God gains, I will gain. Who told you? You may not gain. You, you, because at times when God gains, you don't gain. You will die. So it's not what, it's not what I want to do that I'm doing. So how am I gaining? You say, eh, if God should leave me to myself, I will choose my life myself. I will choose, my, I will choose the way I want my home to be. I will choose where I want to live. I will choose everything about my life. You know, I will select the menu. But well, God did not allow it. Aha. Uh -huh. Shall you get what I'm talking about? Can you say amen? amen. There is even nothing you are doing on head that should be about you. Yes, sir. Yes. Your marriage should not be about you. Yes, sir. Where you live should not be about you. Amen. Your job should not be about you. Amen. Yes. If God will gain. You are not your own. You are, your own. Yes, you are bought by a price. Amen. So, look at that. So, this immortality is the one that the bride that is incorruptible will now have to, must be revealed to them for them to come into the glory of the Lamb. The one that was before, that Jesus was asking before time, creation began. The one that I had with you before creation began. This is your promise as a believer. Every other thing eh, is transient if it's not this. I am saying this so that it will enter into your spirit. That this is your promise. Uh, take me back to, let me just round up that. Okay, take me, finally, finally, okay? Take me to Revelation 19, okay? Let's just do, so, so I thought, I thought around the bride. I didn't go deep into it. So, but, we'll continue. We'll, we'll, we'll keep continuing. The, the, the message is one thing. So let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamp is come and the wife has made herself ready. So to be made ready is to be holy and without blame. What did I say? So it takes an everlasting feast to do that. Uh, to, be, to be holy and without blame. Or to be, to be without spot and without blemish. That's what the, first two, the, the two works of everlasting life does. Uh, is to make you live and abide. They are the two works of God. They are the works of God. The purpose of the works of God or the commandments of God is to produce those two things in the soul to make you spotless and to make you what? Blameless. So that's what it means to be ready. And his wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be what? Arrayed in fine linen, what? Clean and white. That's it. Clean and, clean and white. Spotless. Blameless. For uh, the uh, 
Amen. So, uh, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So, you can be white, you are not clean. So, it is, it, I think there is a puzzle. It is, it, is, it is white and clean. So, when you are clean, it means you are, you are undefiled. It means that they are, they are, they are blotted out spots and blemishes. Because you can be white. So, a virgin is white. A bride is clean. Uh, a bride is clean. They say you are clean. They can't find anything in you, sir. You, you can see some white from afar. It's white. It's when you get close. That you know that it's not clean. Or it's not clean enough. Like my wife, you say, cleanliness has different standard. You know, something can be white, but it has bacteria. You know your toilets can be white, but there's bacteria inside. You cannot see the bacteria. It means that it's white, but it's not clean. If you use that toilet anywhere, you carry infection. But you say, oh, white, oh, white, why, 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 You are not going to stand up like that. I will say bacteria. Bacteria. <laughs> Bacterium bacillosis. We visit your bob bob, sir. They just get tied to you. And you, you don't, you know, say, you're doing. Some of us are here. Some of us are doing it. We do like this. We do like this. Do like this. <laughs> so, the bacteria move for your bob bob. You enter your ears. Some of us, you do like this here. Staphylococcus bacterium. Oti, oti, So you don't know how to so all those toilets that you go to. You have carried things inside your body. You're not supposed to enter. So some, I'm saying that something can be white, but it's not clean. Eh? You can have white clothes inside that jams. It is not clean. So Jesus does not just want us to be white. He wants us to be what? Clean. So the bride will, will be what? Clean and white. And that means that she's ready. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So that righteousness is everlasting righteousness. The one they talked about, Pastor CJ, in Daniel chapter 9. Yes, sir. It's called everlasting righteousness. It's to seal the most holy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Eh? It's to seal the most holy. It's supposed to end the 70 weeks program. Yes, sir. The end of that 70 weeks is to produce an incorruptible bride. Amen. A bride that has been sealed eh, and anointed. <laughs> Thank you. Eh, 70 weeks are determined upon his people, upon the holy city, to finish the transgression, to make ends of sins, and to make reconciliation from iniquity. This is the full work of the, of, of, of the third day. It's a third day work, you can see. In the first two days, they will deal with transgression and sin, and sin. But in the... In the, in, the, in, the, in the third day, they will make reconciliation for what? Iniquity. They deal with iniquity. Iniquity is that tendency for you to turn. All of us have it inside us. Some of the iniquity we have in us is still dormant. So you don't know what you can do. Until the, operation, the circumstances come. So Jesus Christ wants to save you from things that, can, that you can do that you have not done. As he see you, you can do it. In fact, you have done it. <laughs> if Jesus say you are an adulterer, he say yes, sir. He will tell you, you know, some of us we are very defensive. So me, I can never. Me, I'm a holy brother. He just says you are an adulterer. He say yes, sir. Start repenting. He just say you are a thief. It means you will steal. But. It means, of course, in your track record, you must never say, that's why at times when you receive some prophecies that seem negative, receive it with a good heart. Because you don't know what can happen in the future. So you just receive it and go and pray. It's no more than that. Because you have not done it before, does not mean you cannot do it. So Jesus is seeing the tendency. That is what he calls reconciliation from iniquity. is to save you from things that you can do, but you have not done. And you can do them if you have done them. Because in the realm of the spirit, it's like it's still there. They see it as long as they see it there. And those things, eh, it's you. 
So Jesus was, that is what they do with the, that's what they do with the blood. Yes, sir. Or, sprinkling. or sprinkling. That's what they do with the blood. It will go into the recesses of your gene and begin to delete things that make you man. Amen. You know, some of us, the things that we eventually do, that, eh, are, they happen to us when we went through challenges. You went through some challenges that if you went through those challenges, the normal thing you would do is those things. Even people say, hey, you to try. <laughs> eh? So, but they want to walk in you such that you will go through things and your testimony will still be that you, you, you please the Lord. Amen. I said that will be our testimony. Amen. It's only heaven that can do this kind of work in a man. Reconciliation from iniquity. To bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy. Hmm? This is the vision and the prophecy of God's project. It's the vision of God's It's the prophecy. Salvation is a prophecy. The vision is everlasting life and eternal glory. Amen. Eh, they have to seal it up and to anoint the most holy. Amen. So they don't anoint the most holy until they have what? They have finished. The they, finished the, they have reconciled for what? Iniquity. Yes, so that's what we see. Amen. Oh, I can't, I can't go beyond this. So I go beyond this. So this bride eventually. So Revelation 19 bride is an incorruptible bride. By the time we enter into Revelation 21, we see a bride that has been adorned with the glory of God. I don't have time to go there. When you see Revelation, it says, having the glory of God. I think it's in verse 7. Is it, is it verse 11? Can we go to? Aha, thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Stop me from verse 10. He carried me in the spirit. You know that old city is not, it's not heavenly city. It's a bride. Is a people. Yes. Revelation 22 is a people. It's God's city. That's what he's building. Can we say amen? amen. Oh, I say he's building us to be a city. Amen. This is the habitation of God we are talking about. This is the building of God, Pastor CG. He's a people. It's God's city. So that's why I need that. God likes cities. Amen. Yes, huh? And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me a great, that great city. It's a people. Great city. The holy Jerusalem, what? Descending out of heaven, out from God, out of heaven from God. So it is God. These are they are born of God. It is coming from God, out of it. This heaven is not the present heaven. It is a heaven that is in God. How many of you know that there are heavens in God? So it's com- this one is coming out of God. It proceeded, proceeded. It is a product of God's life. Yeah. Men that will be framed completely by God's life. Jen Lett said that there will be nothing of man. Yes, nothing of human composition, imposition. Nothing of man will be them. Meaning that they will delete the present DNA. Amen. This is the miracle of God. Amen. Nothing of the present. Look at the next verse, verse 11. Huh? Having the glory of God. Having, so this one now has the glory of God. Having the glory of God. Having men have glory of God. We don't know what. Men! Because when you read verse 3, it says what? The tabernacle of tabernacle, uh, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is what? With men. Meaning the dwelling place of God is now with what? With men. Longer, no longer will the dwelling place of God will be with angels. But with men, you and I. Uh, and there shall be what? Is people. The people of God are the carriers of God. Amen. Full carriers of God. These are people of God. And God himself sh- shall be with them. And be their God. This is the promise of the New Testament. Yeah. Then look at verse 7. To him that overcomes. Eh, I'm, I'm, we'll go back to verse 11. To him that overcome it shall inherit what? Haunt it. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. So you can't be God's son in this order. This one is not that I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. He take me. That one is different. That's your Christian reality. That's good. 
That's it. You are really a child of God. You are not yet a son. A son of God will overcome what? He will overcome and inherit what? All things. All things, they are things of God. So, to have all things, it means you are an overcomer. And he, I will be his God. So, you, God will not be your God in this capacity. Neither will you be his son in this capacity until you what? Overcome. So, that city in Revelation 21 is an overcoming city. Eh? They have the glory of God. Having the glory of God. Eh? A light was like unto what? A stone. Most what? Precious. Even like what? Clear as what? Clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. That's God's life. Clear as crystal. No occlusion. Eh? No opaqueness. No, me, no misinterpretation. Clear as crystal. They are saying that men will be as clear as crystal. Men, men. Men will be heavens. You can read men. When you are reading them, you are reading God. Men will be clear as crystal. When you are reading men, men will be heavens. Men will be so heavenly that you can read God in their midst. So it means that God will have full expression through men. As it is now, God does not have it. This is the vision of God. Eh? This is the vision of God. Let me tell you this. This is what God wants to do in this season. We have entered into that time. Because of this project, certain things will come on the earth. Two things. First of all, God is going to judge the church. Shake the church. He will do it. Because I can tell you honestly, if you look at the church, nothing will make us respond to this message except trouble. We will, see, so we may not take this message in another 1,000 years if God should wait for us. You know, there are certain if you look, wait for your children to get some things, they will never get it. You have to put structure in place. <laughs> Olubi is a stretching time in his life. I'm pitying him. He wakes up and reads. There's so much to cover. Eh? And after he reads, they'll say, you come and do devotion again. Those want to do devotion because he read all night. He wants to just go and sleep. They'll still tap you up. Come and do prayer. <sighs> I said, this training is good for you. It's your life. Sir, so if you enter university, that's the life in university. From there on, you continue. Life, you know, life gets harder and harder. It doesn't get easier. You wake up, you read. It's part of it. Uh, so God has to put a structure in place. The structure is that God will have to start, listen to this. Trouble is coming on the earth. Amen. It's true, sir. There's no country you run to. It's waiting for you there. Uh, there's no security anywhere. The whole earth will be in turmoil. The only place of refuge will be God. Yes, Men will run to God. Nations will be running to God. Uh, even, the, even America, sir. You know, this Donald Trump thing. It showed the nakedness of America. Yeah. They are not different so much from Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> very, very. I just saw. Oh, I said. So is this the America? Oh, this is the America. Eh? Just like you know, just see. You see them. I say. Ah, so this, this, like, the nakedness. It just shows that there's nothing glorious about any nation. Uh, eh? You know, just like we are confused, like at times things happen in Nigeria, we don't know what happened. There's nobody to blame. They are looking for who to blame for that attempted assassination. Eh? The, the chief of, of, of SS is just con as confused. Of course, you know that it's a lie. See, let me tell you. Listen, I want to say something. Amen. They are the ones that taught us corruption. One paraju bowl, sir. He wrote their news lie. lie. See, how did the guy, a 20 year old guy, enter there? Oh, she, oh, oh, and they the way they talk, you know, the way they paint in American movie that they are the best SSS security. They sweep everywhere. Do you know that 60 minutes, almost an hour before it, some people took phone and snapped the guy on the place, crawling. Some SSS officials saw the guy they didn't do anything. So I one of them Donald Trump, I Is it different from Nigeria? 
Non, mon bré, là, on ça. Pas chez moi, chez Nigeria, là, on Tell them, say no nation is special. Say sin is a general problem. Say corruption is a general problem. So, the only one who serves is worse because they do it and cover it in running. All of you, you are liars. So, they need the gospel more. I just show you, just show the nakedness. So, that's the most powerful nation on earth. So, the most powerful nation of earth. Look at how old they are. There's nothing on the head to admire anymore. You know what I'm teaching? Let man look up to heaven. That's where your help comes from. The head will become so miserable that the only way you can get solution now, look up to God. Eh? Look up to God. Look up to God. When that season where heaven, eh? will be revealed again upon the earth. Amen. And men will be caught up to heavenly life. Amen. Let us begin to talk to the Lord. Let us begin to talk to the Lord. Let us begin to talk to the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Father, we give you thanks. Can you lift up your hands and thank him? The Lord is painting the vision. <laughs> clearer, clearer, clearer. Every time we gather. Can you begin to thank the Lord? Let's just thank him. Come on, lift up your hands and thank Jesus. Come on. Let that vision become your vision. It's the vision of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the vision of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Lord, we are your people. We present ourselves as a generation, Lord. Show us mercy. Build your house in us. Raise us as your temple. We thank you. We and as a man of the heavenly, honor the man of the earthly. And as a man of the heavenly, honor the man of the earthly. It is the spirit of the Lord who avails the heavenly. It is the spirit of the Lord who avails the heavenly. Heaven is calling, calling us to ascend. Hey! Heaven is calling, calling us to come on. Heaven, Heaven is calling, calling us to ascend. Oh, oh, oh. Heaven is calling. 